we switching it up, doing things a little different today. I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of business with the casual. On this channel, we talk about all things fragrance, fashion, style, self-care, mental, physical, and emotional. All of that goes into the total picture of wellness. If y'all into that type of content, stay tuned because we're gonna get into the top 10 for 2021 fall niche and indie edition. Just about every fragrance on this list a woman or a man could pull off. So this fragrance list is not just for the fellas. It's for the fragrance enthusiasts who really like to smell good and wants to come back and get some uncommon scents. Because that's what we did. If you're into that type of content, stay tuned. Because after the jump, we're going to get into that thing. Every single day. Village of Karatlin. Village of Karatlin. Supposed dupe for Penhaligon. How bad it? Let's get up. Spritz in the air. This one comes off leathery, nutty. It kind of reminds me of Tom Ford's fucking fabulous. I've been learning to like this fragrance. A certain leather dashing gentleman fragrance about it. It's a one ounce and it is in Extra de Parfum. Heavy sillage. Major longevity. It smells a uh, freaking Amazing. Coming up to our number 10 spot, we have an indie fragrance from the house of Banapa Pau. It's Al Kanjar. Look at that beautiful bottle. This is an uncommon scent. I've not seen many people talk about it. It is very woody, heavy oud, incensey, and it has that Middle Eastern vibe with spices, and it's just very deep, dark, and sexy, and it's perfect for fall. This is the best time for me to wear these type of fragrances because I layer up. They don't project a lot off of my skin usually, but in the fall, the cool weather, they can cut through so you can really smell. Number 10 is gonna go to Banafa Fouds Al Kanjar. And just, just marvel at that bottle. So beautiful. And you see the liquids in there. To our number nine spot, we got Margot Elena Bulletproof. Smoked tea, coconut, ebony woods, and cedar. It's very dark and brooding, kind of like a chai latte. But I really feel like it's perfect for fall and cooler weather. We're really just really getting into the cold weather now in Chicago. Coming up to our number eight spot, L'Alcissin Parfumeres Timbuktu. Timbuktu is one of those fragrances that took me a while to really warm up to. Shout out to Amina. Comes up so earthy. Is very dark and deep. It has an incense note, carol grande, and mango. But the mango in here isn't juice. It's a drier type of mango. It really feels like a fragrance that was made for me. It's undescribable. I have a newer bottle. Got a little dent in there. This fragrance to me on my skin is an uncommon scent. Like nothing I've ever smelled. This is one of the most interesting fragrances that I have in my collection. As far as the niche fragrance goes, it is one that is more of a special occasion scent. I don't find myself reaching for it a whole lot, especially outside of the cooler temperature. Coming up to our number seven spot, Mancera's Wind Wood. Matter of fact, and in the opening, it's a little tough because it does have that gasoline or that very heavy violet. It's such a fresh, sexy fragrance. It's one of the easier to wear niche fragrances in my collection. It has that designer type of appeal while still maintaining its niche quality. Kind of reminds me of a niche version of Dior Fahrenheit. What I mainly get in this fragrance is the violet and the woods in this one and that dry cedar type of feel. I have been wearing it a lot more than I thought I would. My first encounter with it, I wasn't the biggest fan of it and figured, you know what, I may have kind of did myself a disservice, but Mancera never disappoints to me. It's one of my favorite niche houses. If you are into violet fragrances, violet, wood, and some green notes. Coming up to our number six spot, we got Alexandra's Upside Down. Now, this is a dupe of uh, Initio Side Effects. That's probably behind this room kicking. 
very heavy vanilla, boozy rum. Ugh, smells so good. I will say though, in the beginning, there is something that kind of comes off like bug spray. It's a little off-putting once you get past that. It's like, damn, oh my goodness. This is an amazing fragrance for fall, especially now we're kind of getting to a really cool temperature, soon to be winter. Shout out to Tyree Beatty, he put me on. This one is New Year in Rejection and Longevity. I only really need two sprays max and my skin usually eats fragrances up but doesn't project a whole, whole lot. But this one is a beast. And when I tell you a beast, I mean a beast. The rum, vanilla, did I mention vanilla? Vanilla and those boozy notes. This is gonna juke. Let me set the top. Inspired by fragrances or cloned houses that do well in the arena of duplicating niche fragrances, they'll end up on this list. This is my list and they do this so well. I don't even need to smell Initio side effect. If it's anything like this, it's a win to me. I'm not a niche snob to the point where if it's not the original, I won't rock with it. That matters to me not. Y'all know what time it is. Got it. Cleanse. The palette. Got it. Cleanse. And the palette. We've been smelling way too many fragrances. Cleanse that palette with some fresh ground coffee beans. Come on. I'm getting it. It's just time to. We got, we got more fragrances to smell. So, come on. All right. Especially with that windwood like hitting right up underneath my neck. Need that palette cleanser. Coming up to our number five spot, we have La Tapa's Alcatat Alarabia. I got it earlier in the year. Luscious fruits, apple pie, vanilla. Mm, really luscious, warm apple pie. It seems perfect for the fall. As a gourmand, this one's really sexy. Now, I've noticed that this one does not last the longest on my skin, so I've been wearing it in fall and it seems like it's doing a bit better, but I just go a little heavier on the trigger. For me, seven to 10 sprays, chest, back of the neck, arms, you know, all up in here, chesticles, hitting those areas are great, but since we're a bit more layered up, it's probably more important to hit the areas where you get some bare skin so it can really undulate and flow out. And it was not that expensive, 40 bucks for it. And it's a huge bottle. Latafa, you did your thing with this one. I'm not exactly sure who this one is supposedly a dupe of. I've seen people say Byredo's Pulp. I haven't smelled Byredo's Pulp. And I don't care, to be honest with you. This is just a great fragrance. And if you do great fragrances, you'll end up in my collection. Number four spot needs no introduction. Everybody has been talking about this one. It's getting compared to all these other fragrances. Let's just get into it. Shout out Food by Swiss Arabian. Maison Lancome. Some people are comparing it to Mancera's Oud Vanille. Snicker doodle cinnamon sugar type of vibe from this. Saffron is in here too. So have that leather accord that is recognizable. I'm still gonna maintain what I rated this before. A woody snickerdoodle with some cola notes. Amazing sillage, some amazing longevity. Check out Oud by Swiss Arabian. Compared to Oud Vanille, they are similar, they are nowhere near the same. This one is probably a bit more drier and a bit more oody. Whereas, we won't talk about that because that's another video. I'm not giving all my content away free in this one video. You gotta watch the other videos. Coming up to our number three spot. What can I say? I mean, seriously, what can I say? Number three spot is gonna go to one of my favorite niche houses and that is Mancera's Hindu Kush. And you may be asking, okay. Why are you wearing Hindu Kush in the bar? And it's in the new atomizer. There's something so woody and green. It's a, it's a green, deep lushness about it. And the cannabis note in here, I enjoy. It's not the burning cannabis, but it's the cannabis bud. The one that has not been burned yet. It's so present. Fragrances like this just really encourage me to continue to learn and get into fragrances because they smell so sexy. This is another uncommon scent to me that I've not smelled on anybody. A lot of fragrance reviews are talking about it, but I haven't smelled this on anybody, and I really enjoy this fragrance. Like this to Black Afghano by Nasamato, but Nasamato's Black Afghano is a bit more earthy and dirty, like a smudge or a smoke and put out <laughs> weed. This one's probably the more freshly farmed or neatly pruned type of cannabis. It's very green as a cannabis note. 
is better for cooler temperatures. It could teeter the top of the line between early spring, late fall. Of course, you wear what you want. You wear what fits you. And I wear my fragrances all year round, but these are the fragrances that'll be getting the most play. And that's why it's a top 10. It's not like I won't be wearing other fragrances, but I'll probably be wearing these fragrances the most. Got a nice little dent in it. And for my collection to be coming along like it has been, at about 150-ish bottle, this one is getting a lot of play. Coming up to our number two spot, we have another La Sin Parfumeas, Nar Exquis. This one is so heavy in vanilla. It's smoky, chestnut, amber, honey-ish type of vibe. This type of fragrance to me is best in the fall because this one has amazing and heavy CI too. Shout out to Andrew who sold me this bottle and I ended up still getting a newer formulation, but this one is stellar. As you all can see, I've been hitting this one in the head quite nicely. I enjoy this fragrance on me to me. Nar excuse, it's been compared to Maison Margiela's by the fireplace. Oh my God, so, so good. This is a fragrance that you will not be unnoticed wearing this fragrance. So if you're into confidence and that's your driving factor, this right here is sexy on the gents, it's sexy on the ladies, it's sexy to anybody that's got a damn nose and a pulse. You made it. You made it. I thank you first and foremost for spending some time with Uncommon Sense and sticking around to figure out what's at the top. Shout out to Doc Rose, put me on this one in one of the many sample sets that she sent me. So grateful and thankful for her in the fragrance community and calling her a friend because she is truly a gift. So shout out to you, Doc. Thank you so very much for putting me in touch with fragrances I probably would have never gotten the chance to smell. Now, thanks to you, to Lulu, to Centrifugal Force, to Abraham Johnson, thanks to all you lovely people, I'm addicted. And number one spot goes to Mancera's Crazy for Oud. Yo, Mancera's Crazy for Oud is one sexy mother. I've gotten so many unsolicited compliments off of this fragrance right here. The tiramisu, the booze, the oud. Laotian oud is in this one. And this is not the, the really deep, skanky oud. It has a really soft, sweet sillage. It lasts on my skin for a long time. It's a projection monster too. I remember coming from work and going to get something to eat at Chipotle. The people behind the counter kept saying, somebody smell good, somebody smell good. After a whole day's work through masks over Chipotle, still smelling good. When I tell you crazy, but ooh, is one of the best man Sarah has released in a while. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination gaslighting you or lying to you. Crazy for Oud is that deal. And I had to revisit this one. I sprayed it before in the spring and I wasn't the biggest fan, but I still had a nice size decant and I wore it a few times and I was like, yo, this shit is fire. This fall, I'm gonna be rocking crazy for Oud because the way that the Laotian Oud and the tiramisu is done here, but man. I'm, I'm for Clint. I'm like a lost for words. That rarely happens. Thank you all for sticking around and watching this top 10. And let me know what's on your fall niche and indie list for 2021. Fragrance is subjective. A lot of these fragrances are either unisex or some are even targeted toward women. On common sense. That's what we do. We're not going to do things the same way that everybody else is going to do them. Otherwise, what's the point of me being here with y'all? You know I love y'all. We gotta make sure we give y'all something fresh, something hot, something new. It's your man, Uncommon Sense. I thank you all for all your love and support. And drop some comments. Let me know what you think about this video. Like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Well, time is a social construct, so. In most cultures, folks don't know about time. They just know, is the job being done and is it being done fully? That's what we care about. I love you from the bottom of my heart, the top to sides, all the way around. And then we gonna lift it up and love on you underneath. And until next time, y'all. I'm out.